this video explains the mechanism and the physical examination for testing the power of the rotator cuff muscles. The supraspinatus muscle inserts in the superior facet of the greater tubercle and originates from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula. The main movement produced by this muscle is an abduction of the shoulder. Looking from the lateral view, however, we can see that the orientation of the supraspinatus is slightly posterior relative to the humerus. This is also why the contraction of the supraspinatus would lead to some external rotation of the shoulder as well. To test the supraspinatus, one must first abduct the shoulder to 60 degrees, followed by a forward flexion of 30 degrees, allowing the humerus to be in line with the scapula and therefore being in line with the supraspinatus as well, as well as rotating the arm so that the thumb is pointing downwards, allowing the muscle to be perfectly in line with the humerus. Again, to test the power of the supraspinatus, first ask the patient to abduct the shoulders to around 60 degrees, then forward flex them to around 30. Internally rotate their shoulders to be positioned in a thumbs down empty can position. It is called the empty can position because it is like pouring fluid out of a can. To test the power, simply try to push the arms down. A non-functional supraspinatus muscle can be identified with the aptly drop arm sign. Place the patient's arm in the same position by first abducting it, forward flexing it, and internally rotating it so that it's in the empty can position. Ask the patient to maintain that position as you let go, and if it falls, that is a positive sign. Most commonly due to a full thickness, full width supraspinatus tear. The infraspinatus inserts at the middle facet on the posterior surface of the greater tubercle, and originates in the infraspinous fossa of the scapula. The contraction of this muscle leads to the external rotation of the shoulder. To test the infraspinatus, first ask the patient to flex their elbows to 90 degrees with their elbows touching their trunk. Then ask the patient to externally rotate the shoulder and ask them to resist you internally rotating the shoulder. To test for a non-functional infraspinatus, you can try elicit the near drop arm sign. Passively flex the patient's elbow to 90 degrees and then externally rotate it. Ask the patient to maintain that position before you let go. An inability to maintain that externally rotated position will be recorded as a positive sign indicating a non-functional infraspinatus, with the most common cause being a full thickness, full width infraspinatus tear. The teres minor inserts at the lesser facet of the greater tubercle and originates from the lateral border of the posterior surface of the scapula. The contraction of this muscle also leads to the external rotation of the shoulder. Remember that the infraspinatus also causes external rotation of the shoulder. Compared to the infraspinatus, the teres minor contributes more to the external rotation when the shoulder is abducted. This is because in this position, the orientation of the teres minor is more parallel to the axis of external rotation, thereby allowing it to be a greater contributor to that movement. The hornblower's test is used to test the power of the teres minor. The patient is asked to form a fist with their hand and to place the hand next to the mouth as if they were blowing into a horn. Note that in this position, the patient's shoulder is abducted to 90 degrees, thereby this is testing the teres minor and not the infraspinatus. You can then test the power by trying to internally rotate the shoulder and ask the patient to resist you. The subscapularis inserts in the lesser tuberosity of the humerus and originates from the subscapular fossa of the scapula. The contraction of this muscle leads to the internal rotation of the shoulder. There are multiple tests to test the power of the subscapularis. The first test is called the hand behind back test. First ask the patient to place the dorsal aspect of their hand on the back along the midline in the lumbar level. Next, simply ask the patient to lift the hand off the back. Ensure that the patient is doing this by internally rotating the shoulder and not extending it. A non-functional subscapularis can be tested by passively moving the patient's arm into the same lift off position. Ask the patient to maintain that position after you let go and if it falls back onto the back, this can be recorded as a positive result indicating a non-functional subscapularis. The most common cause is a full thickness, full width subscapularis tear. The next test is called the belly press test. 
ask the patient to place their hand on their belly and push inwards by internally rotating the shoulder. Be aware that in patients with pathologies relating to the subscapularis, that they may compensate by first extending the shoulder, adducting the shoulder, as well as flexing the wrist to get a false negative result. The last test is called the bear hug test. Ask the patient to place their hand on the contralateral shoulder and ask them to resist against you externally rotating their shoulder. 